So in a previous video, we looked quickly at this Tenor 763 1702 AE PROM programmer uh, and talked about, you know, uh, how the thing works. Uh, and we'll actually recap that here again. So this EEPROM programmer, you put the 72, of course, in. You put it in right. So we can power it up here and kind of demonstrate this. I'm actually drop a 1702. I'm not supposed to do that with the power on. It's pretty primitive. This thing was designed for an alarm system, as I recall. And you program the alarm, you come up with 16 byte words. Uh, ones and zeros, it did various things in the alarm system. And then you came to here and you set those 16 bits up on the switches and then hit load to program it. And what's actually happening here is the bottom set of switches, so at the home position, A0 to A7 are all zeros. We put in the byte uh, down here, the lower byte, and that's represented by A7 equals zero. And then we put in the byte we want at address where A7 equals one. So it programs address zero and then 80 on a cycle. And then we put in the next 16 bits and it programs address 0, 01 and 81. So it would program address 0, 80, and 0, 01, 81. So it's kind of a pain to work with. I load up an Intel hex file, but we, uh, we uh, let's go ahead and program a few bits here. So uh, reset. The device has nothing in it. So uh, let's program into it. We'll put in. A5 here, and we'll put in 5A here, and we'll put in 0F here, and F0 here. So I want to set the switches to A5 and 5A, and it should program the A5 at address 0 and the 5A at address 80. And go ahead and I've got to put it in right mode. I got the switches wrong. No, I don't. There's 5A, A5. We can go ahead and load that. And then we want to write F0 and 0F. And we'll load that. And we'll put it back in remote, read mode and reset. And there's the contents at address 0. And the, contents, the contents at address 80. If we step onto the next address, we then have, just as you see here, the pattern we wrote. So it's, it's kind of clumsy to use. You can see you kind of got to do this weird data translation in your head. And it makes it kind of difficult to deal with like an Intel hex file. But I'll still be able to use it for the project. But the real goal of this video here is go ahead and open the case up and take a peek inside. Since everybody wants to see what's on the inside. Now there is an electrical issue with this thing, the driver for this LED right here has an issue. It doesn't always sense it correctly, even though it writes it correctly. But uh, It's heavy and very dense inside, so I want to be very careful here taking it apart. I don't want to damage it. I don't have a manual or schematic for it. As I recall, internally it was uh, pretty heavily packed. somewhat difficult to, uh, it would be very difficult, honestly, to, to strip down and work on. Oh, it was missing a screw. Maybe. We actually got it loose. We do. Be careful here. I think the only wires from the top to the bottom are the power supply. It's just very clumsy inside. We got something that's. Oh, it's where the. Uh, lead is coming into the transformer. Boy, I'd forgotten just how clumsy this is inside. Let's see if that'll give me any more room. I 
honestly, it doesn't want to. I really don't want to have to remove the leads off the transformer. I really don't want to remove the transformer. But we will. We'll do it for science. Transformers just plain going to have to come out. I remember just saying a second ago here I didn't want to do this, and here I am doing it. It's going to be pretty clumsy to put back together. Hopefully I'm not going to damage it because that would spoil the project I actually want to do with it. Come on. leads is actually wrapped around the standoff in a funky way. Before I go any further, I'm going to do some documentation just in case one of those breaks off or comes loose. We have the transformer. There's a bit wider gap there. And we have a PCB that has four mounting positions. That lead going to three. We have this lead going to look one more time here. We have lead coming to here and we have this lead coming to here that's interesting if that's how it's put together but that is how it's put together this probably would have been better done by taking the front panel off now that I've looked inside so we'll go ahead and see if we can get these screws to break loose. This, this is probably how I should have taken it apart in the first place. This panel will lift off. I've, for a few people, used this thing over the years to refresh 1702s. And I think every time I have to sit down and muck with it till I remember how it works. Uh, it certainly wasn't intuitive the first time I put power to it. This should now lift off. There we go. And you can get a better look down inside. Man, that line cord is just a pain. Case top is determined to fall back over onto it no matter where I put it. It's just like, nope, I'm going to lay where you don't want me to. So there's a look down inside. Uh, there's obviously an EEPROM in it, which honestly should probably be refreshed at some point. This is the LED that kind of gives us trouble. 
it's just intermittent prom loader. I'm gonna push more of the line cord through here, get myself oh come on, don't don't. Some more room to kind of move things around together. That EEPROM, I do believe, is a 2716. Oh no, it's a 1702 itself. That should probably be read out. However, I've got no way to read it out because I need it in the device, obviously, for it to function. I see a big power supply section underneath. You can see the big blue filter caps in there. Heat sink, voltage regulators. 27 or this the 1702 I think requires a 47 volts as one of the programming voltages, which is really pretty odd. Uh, this line cord is definitely not spliced in super well. But there it is, there's not a whole lot more to see. Lousy looking solder connection there. There's kind of a flex cable that I don't want to take a chance on damaging that runs it's soldered down up here and runs down underneath. And that is a really lousy looking solder connection. I don't want to tempt it. I don't want to poke too much in here. Interesting, it uses a 1702. It's, it's probably for driving you know, sequential logic or whatever. Uh, device date codes are 1980, 8041, 8041, 80, 22nd week of 80, 11th week of 80. So this was manufactured in 1980 or so. So a few years after the 1702 first came on the market. That's interesting. All of these connections to these pull-up resistors here have been cut apart. I wonder why. I'm assuming that's a pull-up resistor pack. There's a yeah, those are all cut. Pretty lousy job of it. Whoever did it. See, a schematic would be helpful, but don't have that luxury. Curious about that LED. Solder joints into there look fine. Definitely seems mechanical because occasionally you can thump it. And it will uh, light up. But where the issue is is so hard to say. The fact that it seemed to reliably program the bit tends to say to me that it's like not in the switch assembly. Well, I'm going to do what I said I wasn't going to do here and I'm just going to touch up a few solder joints around that LED maybe oh come on cases on top of the cape or the cord a little difficult to work down in there
course, big old solder ball. Definitely not a friendly place to get into and work. best soldering in the world. It's not horrid. That's as much work as I dare do. So I'm going to go ahead and set it back down on the case bottom. Yeah, a bit of a tight area to work in, that's for sure. Get a, get a washer on there. Oh, come on. Why is it it always starts and then last second doesn't? Oh, don't pick up little bits of lead. sounds I'm hearing. get you to no it's really not gonna work with me can I get this washer down over and the ground spade maybe yeah this was a mistake to take apart at least to release the transformer yeah. Odds are this is going to catch the nut and shoot it off someplace. Don't have enough hands. That was not easy.
Not as tight as I'd like in the nuts spinning. See if I can get back down on the nut again. Happy with that. It, I'd be very unhappy if I had. Long screw. It was a pan head, and these are uh, the machine head, flush head, whatever you call them. I know you can line up. threaded it's a little happier how do I keep ending up with So this was built 1980, we said, so uh, 20, 39 years old. I've had it, oh god, easily 15 years. Uh, say it was a find on eBay, I realized what it was. The seller didn't really know what it was. Uh, just put up there, you know, blah 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 model. 1702 something and I realized in the pictures it was a 1702 EEPROM programmer of some kind and went ah sweet don't think I got bit against although I may have well if we killed it I'll make sure none of the transistor leads are shorted up against the PCB I mean the transformer leads, and they are insulated. So that's obviously one of the devices we played with. Uh, did you see him flake around and come on there? source of that was. Sorry, I'm just kind of poking things around it. See if maybe there's a mechanic, you know, a bad solder joint I can detect. It's possible the issue's inside the LED itself. So that was that first device we played with. I don't remember which one's which here now. was 
programmed into that one. I recognize the pattern. And this has got the bit pattern and the LEDs will walk across. And look at that, it's working for some reason. It's what's going to happen. Be really careful here, not short anything. Good within a schematic, it's so hard to determine what goes where. At the moment, we should now be able to put it in program mode. That. We should see the bits walk across, and then we should pick up the two bytes I added. That's not good. Hmm. Wonder why those are dim. Flaky down here along the bottom row. This LED should be out and it's like half lit. Same thing to there. It's part of the multiplexing, it looks like. It looks like these are maybe multiplexed in groups of four. The question becomes is it. Empty socket is read zeros in this case. Well, interesting. Well, that's probably enough. Very boring. Let's poke at it till we break it. Let's see if we can get it put back together.
routed that line cord makes that really difficult to deal with. machine behind me. And it's the joys of being in the lab. Well, this is drug on forever. It probably hasn't been very informative. But it is a 1702 e prime programmer, which is kind of a rarity in today's world. Even if it's an oddball one meant for programming an alarm system. I vaguely remember there being a manual I did find someplace that went into how the bits were used for programming the alarm system, but it really wasn't, didn't give me schematics or those kinds of things, so uh, I think this gives me enough to move ahead with building out a prom card, forking up a device, setting it to a, a different read address using the current Altmon ROM in the system, and then see if I can read the ROM back and get the right bit pattern back, so. I'm encouraged enough to move ahead. Oh. Well, once you're here, let's do it right. Doggone it. Why is it you always get all the screws in, get it all put together, then you notice what you did wrong? The, uh, cases together correctly. That's better. And you get to watch me set the seat the same screws again. Because you know, it's just so thrilling. And of course, the same ones that gave me trouble before are going to give me trouble again. See, I'd really like that one LED to work reliably. I just don't want to go too deep into the thing. smoke or fire. Let's post, put a device in with it powered up. Uh, yeah, I can see now that where I noticed the ghosting and the other LEDs, I just, I don't think I saw it before, just because it's so dim. That LED got bent a little bit, perhaps. Not that it matters. Now, I've said it like five times. I'm going to go ahead and end this here. And hopefully you saw something interesting. We'll talk soon.